Now, Kim Kardashian, uh, who's been a lawyer, I don't know, for like one minute and has never practiced law and failed the bar three times, has decided to launch a, it's basically an innocence project podcast where she's using her considerable legal skills <laughs> to try to tell us why certain certain people didn't commit the crimes. And she's outright said this guy, Kevin Keith, is innocent in her esteemed legal opinion and is making the case for this guy to get out of jail. Now, he was convicted in May of 1994 in Ohio on three counts of aggravated aggravated murder, three counts of attempted aggravated murder. They say he went into this house and he unleashed hell on this family, uh, shooting several people. And uh, again, as I said, killing three people, including a four-year-old girl, her 24-year-old mother, and a 39-year-old uh, woman who was the aunt, and then shooting three others, including a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and uh, the boyfriend of one of the, the people who died. Um, those who survived have uniformly said this was the guy who did it. They, they've said it, it was this man who's been convicted, um, Kevin Keith. But there are some holes in some of the testimonials, like, well, the main guy said, when he was first asked by like EMTs who did it, he said, I don't know. But then the next morning, he's like, it was Kevin Keith. And they say, well, the cops got to him and gave him that name. But he also managed to pick him out out of a photo lineup of six men. He said that was him, and it was Kevin Keith. And they're trying to suggest that there was another guy who did it, um, who was who was also mad. This they they claim the motivation in this case was um, this guy had been ratted out. This guy had been ratted out by the brother of the main woman who was shot. That the brother of the main woman who was shot was a police informant, and this guy paid the price for it. This Kevin Keith. And Kevin Keith raised at trial the fact that there was another man who'd been ratted out by this brother, and he could have done it. He raised it at trial. The jury rejected it. Now they want it to be the basis for his conviction being overturned. Uh, and this is getting attention now because, you know, that's just where we are right now. All criminal justice convictions must be revisited, especially when in here the jury was all white and the defendant is not. Yeah. You know, it's funny because when we were able to do this kind of thing, we're able to have these innocence projects, the podcast, all the entertaining things that surround it. When we have convictions that are that predate forensics as we know them today. Right. Because when without that um, eyewitness testimony is often subject to, you know, uh, it's problematic. Um, other testimony, witness statements, blah, blah, et cetera. It's not as solid in a juror's mind. As, as the science can be. So it kind of lends itself to this sort of attack years, years later down the road. But I, you know, and I didn't follow this case per se. I don't like whenever children are killed, I kind of, you know, I'm not going to, I don't get involved mm. because I just, mm-hmm. I just no excuse. Um, you know, and I don't know how much, if there's no solid evidence that can exonerate, if there's no solid evidence that says not only is did this man he's innocent versus not only can he we not find him uh guilty we actually have to find him innocent if there's no evidence to prove that then i have a hard time overturning convictions that several courts have refused to overturn etc and this to me falls in that vein as opposed to another podcast i don't know the and i know that you've heard of it the serial podcast with yeah, um, Adnan to say Adnan, Adnan, which, which i thought totally different from this. When I listened to Serial, I was hooked on Serial. And I was also convinced that Adnan Syed was innocent, actually innocent. Not that they didn't prove it, that he was actually innocent. And when I compare these two, it's not the same for me. Do you, Mm -hmm. how did you feel about the Adnan Syed? Do you feel the same? When I listened, when I listened to the podcast, I was leaning toward, oh yeah, you know, there's I don't know if he did it. Like, I have enough questions that they should try him again, that we should have another fair look at this. Um, but I've got questions about Marilyn Mosby and the way that she, that's the prosecutor in Baltimore, who you you and I go way back on her. Um, and she's an activist. And this they've raised similar allegations of like Adnan was bullied because he was a Muslim and the police didn't do their... And she's like all about identity politics. And she's the one who swooped in and said, oh, no, he didn't do it. And now the one who swooped in and said, and he's never going to be retried. We, we're not retrying him. It's over. Double jeopardy, whatever. Can't go back at him. And um, I I don't trust her. And when I took a hard look at the evidence 
you know, that the family was raising, I, I remain with questions. Where's Jay, first of all? He's the main witness in that case who says Adnan showed him the body in, in Adnan's trunk and that he and Adnan buried the victim together, right? Now, I realize there's some holes in Jay's story, but I didn't find them that problematic. The biggest one was Jay originally said that he sh- Adnan showed him the body of the defendant, the decedent, in front of um, Jay's grandma's house. That, that's what actually happened uh, now, according to Jay. But originally he told cops another story. And Jay is saying, well, I didn't want to tell you it was in front of my grandma's house. I didn't want my grandma to get involved. And by the way, I deal drugs out of grandma's house. So I just didn't really want you going over there messing with it. I buy that. I don't, I really have doubts about Adnan. I'd like to see another trial. I, I don't, I don't agree with the decision not to retry him. But I don't, I don't know about this case. I don't see anything here that makes me say we should be revisiting this man's conviction. Nothing. What I see is an attention-hungry, vain, back-to-me person who wants to see her name in the headlines, perhaps for some reason other than her ass, trying to bring attention to herself and not to this defendant. That's what I believe is happening here. Well, isn't it, isn't it perfect? I mean, what a great way to be a lawyer, right? Not actually practicing law, just sort of practicing more legal entertainment, which I found Serial to be very legally entertaining. I'm sure That's Kim's is. podcast is very legally entertaining. She doesn't actually have to make any decisions or have anybody's life specifically in her hands. And not for nothing, um, and you probably know this, but a lot of the, when when we do have a defendant who is, later exonerated and let out of prison after so many years, they typically get big fat paychecks from the state for their wrongful incarceration. Mm -hmm. And not that she needs the money, um, but, you know, I could see that maybe helping her motivate things. I don't know. I I, I just feel like uncomfortable generally with this, like, you know, people who don't have law degrees, who don't have never practiced law, who are not steeped in the criminal law, doing these in-depth podcasts, trying to get somebody exonerated because they think it's exciting. They think it's, you know, they're onto something. They're gonna get their own name and lights. I think we really need to pump the brakes on these cases because the public sort of loves these, you know, down on his luck, oh, look at him now stories. And there are real victims. You know, this guy, says a jury, murdered three people, including a child, and shot three more, including two other children. That is not somebody we want back out on the streets because Kim Kardashian thinks he ought to be. So I really, I got, I got concerns about the whole situation. Samantha from Arcadia, California is raving about Genucel's transformative results. She says, I love Genucel plant stem cell therapy. I've used it all over my face, under my eyes, and it cleared up the dry flakiness and even reduced my forehead lines. Someone even asked if I had work done. Nope, just Genucel. Thank you. Genucel has sold over 1 million products to women and to men across this country. Fine lines, forehead wrinkles, dark spots, sagging jawline, even those annoying bags and puffiness, gone without risky procedures. And with its immediate effects product, there are guaranteed results in as little as 12 hours or your money back. See the difference for yourself with over 60% off their most popular packages at Genucel.com. But it gets better. Go to Genucel.com slash MK60 right now, and they will include the brand new Genucel Hyaluronic Acid Serum as a free gift. Powerful, moisturizing effects to brighten your complexion and further reduce the appearance of visible signs of aging. Plus, all orders will get free express shipping. Visit genucel.com slash MK60 to find out more. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash MK60. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.